My name's Pete, and this is my adventure of the GB Divide. Follow me in this four-part video series as I attempt to complete the 2,000 kilometer route. It would test me in more ways than I thought possible, and at the end of the day, was a great adventure. This is the GB Divide. starting now. So at this point it's probably worth me explaining a bit about what this adventure is. It was first invented in 2019 for a race called the GB Duro. The GB Duro in this first edition was won by Lachlan Morton and there was a fantastic video done by Rafa about his trip. Now the route that that race follows is known as the GB Divide and I set out to complete the route by myself in a self-supported fashion in about 15 days. Now the author of this route doesn't want too much spoiled about where the hard bits are so I'll try not to do that and as per those wishes I turned up with absolutely no idea what I was in for. the feeling of finally starting your adventure. All of the packing, the fretting, the repacking, it's all behind you now and all that's left to do is look ahead. But I'm doing okay. I am dry and I am about to go back on some tracks again. I'm starting to think about where I might stay tonight. Sometimes you've just got to sit down and get some calories in. Um, felt a bit lightheaded and nauseated little bit bonkish so uh, sometimes you just sit down wherever you are in the woods and um, have some calories it's amazing how just stopping for a little bit can help the first day complete I finished it with a Cornish pasty and found a local campsite where I could pitch my tent <laughs> We found a little campsite and uh, finally it's decided to stop raining just as I put some stuff up. So that's an absolute dream. Trying to dry some stuff. Uh, bike sitting down there. Good to be on the road, get the first, first leg done and uh, yeah, excited. As I woke up to day two, Light streaming through my tent, sun on my face, I felt optimistic. I had my sights firmly set on Devon and was planning a big day in the saddle.
These back roads are gorgeous. No. <sighs> quite peaceful out here. It's quite peaceful. Where's Alf? Day three. Um, we're in Devon, about to go into the Exmoor National Park. Had a night in a B&B, uh, &B, washed some clothes, dried my tent, and um, yeah, it's 6.30am, keen to get out there. Alright, we're leaving. We're in Devon, headed straight into the Exmoor National Park. Looks like on the profile I've just got lots of climbing for the first part of the day to get up in there, so... Yeah, just uh, get into the rhythm of things and get going. entered into the Exmoor National Park. A day that was going to push me to my limit, but I didn't know that yet. At the moment, I was just absolutely loving the scenery.
I've been riding for so long and I've done like 70k and 2,000 meters of climbing. And it's raining. Okay. Onwards. I'm gonna keep going. Mostly because I want to get through bridge water and I don't know. I don't know what else to do, so I'm just gonna keep going. I've had a massive feed, so hopefully. Oh, we're going under a bridge here. I've got, still got plenty of food in my bag, so maybe I'll just keep going for a bit longer. No, I almost let today beat me, but uh, important lesson I reckon is when something's really almost about to beat you, you just get up and you do one more. up the Mendips to try and find a camp spot. I guess I'll just keep going till I find something. It needs to be a bit flatter than where it is now. Good thing about summer here is you've got plenty of light to play with so. Pack's full of food. I've got the uh, I've got the espresso milkshake from the farm in one of the bottles so that'll be a wee treat when I get to the campsite if I find one. <laughs> Otherwise, I might just be sleeping with the cows. Getting close to Bristol. We found a camping spot. Yeah, it's been a full on day. Wild camping in the, in a little wood section up in the um, Mendips, up in the Mendips, so uh, down towards Bristol tomorrow um, and just get straight into bed I think because it's been uh, 13 or <laughs> 13 hours on the bike today so it's been raining all night and it's not got much sleep it's too rainy now I just want it to stop raining for 5 seconds so I can Ooh. So I can pack the tent up. Ugh, I don't know if it's going to let up. I might have to just get up. It's been a night in the bush. Um, and it rained on me the entire night. I need to get out of here. I need to get down to Bristol. This was my track when I came in last night. <clears throat> Currently a river. Goodbye hole in the bush. You were not a bad place to sleep. All right, let's go. I just want to try and capture what I'm descending down here. Um... I'm really tired. Mm. This was the first one of my big lows on the trip. It was very apparent that yesterday had taken a lot out of me. I felt completely exhausted, emotional, and the fourth day of rain was really starting to hit me mentally. <sighs> I don't know if it's my allergies or if I'm just feeling really emotional, but I've got like tears streaming down my face. I'm just so struggling so much today. The thing about bikepacking is it's actually quite a simple task. You've really only got three objectives. One, 
forward progress. Two, consuming food and water. And three, finding shelter at the end of the day. And that's actually just it. Sometimes you're walking your bike up a steep, rutted bridleway. Other times you're spinning through leafy, green woodland. But that doesn't change what you have to do. And it's keep going. I just couldn't believe I was experiencing these huge swings already, only four days in. But as I rolled into Bristol, I had my mind set on a massive brunch and a phone call to home. Filled with as much bacon, eggs and coffee as I could consume, I felt a little optimistic going forward. As I stood on the bridge between England and Wales, Wales. I reflected on what a challenge this trip had been so far, Not and Wales. undoubtedly the challenges that were still waiting for me. I took a deep breath and, well, okay. I kept going. Okay.